being disconnected is one of the most lonely places we can be. You reach that depression state because you're not connecting with anyone else. You're not, you know, like we are now having these, these conversations, mm. connecting with you. You're not having that same connection with yourself because everything's so fucking, it's, 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 a, it's a whirlwind. Business, the marriage, you know, pressures, three children, you mm -hmm. know, working late, um, working and having um, those, the, the pressures there all the time and not being able to have someone like you were in Europe. I was in Europe, so you were in Europe, to me. And I didn't have any friends that were, with. that to really connect with, you know, like. Um, so how did you connect to and how did, because, because you got to a pretty bad point, eh? Mm, yeah. So how did you, how did you bypass that? What was the real thing because because I've lost people over the years that haven't and have taken their lives lost the young guy last year and, and plenty more lost my girlfriend when I was 16 so so what made you difference was it the bones of who you were that, that was strong enough to get through that or was it something else well, I, I, th I think early on I mean when I was 18 I, I, I read a book about Buddhism and, okay. and, and that to me spoke to me about that just the the uh, the principles of Buddhism, and it was a pretty heavy book. I mean, it was, it was so it was wasn't something I read cover to cover. I, I went through it, and I got some ideas about knowing the self and the idea that what we perceive as self is a, is is largely constructed from our conditioning. Right. You know, if you take a, a child and you drop him in Afghanistan, he's going to be you know a Muslim Afghani child. Yeah. If you drop him into you know the UK, he's going to be British and you know mm. um, um, perhaps a question but the thing is that we are all a product of our conditioning to understand that and then realize well okay because I've got to this point that there's an element of conditioning in that what is that okay what was my childhood like you know what am I carrying from my childhood what am I carrying you know from these this relationship mm. Mm. and really the 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 thing for me was, and I know it's, it doesn't work for everyone, but it's that feeling that, you know what, there's people that are worse off than me. I've got to pull myself out of that. And I guess it was some sort of... Isn't that interesting? There's it, people that are worse off than me, and so you're saying you're feeling disconnected, but you're still in some way connecting to people you yeah, don't know that are uh, worse off. Yeah, so you weren't yeah. totally disconnected from society were you yeah and, and maybe that's it because i'm you know i can cry at fucking um tv commercials you know so i have a lot you can of cry at tv commercials yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. well it was i know but <laughs> I, I, so i have a lot of empathy yeah. and when i it's great. talk about things emotional i do get emotional oh that's great yeah. Yeah. but yet it's funny because i have people who accuse me of not being connected to my emotions i know i get because, that because i get that because i don't get angry yeah because i know that anger doesn't serve me but I know that... I've never seen you angry, actually. That's a funny yeah. thing. But I've never seen you angry. No, because yeah. it's... Anger is an emotion. And in our Western culture, we say, oh, I'm angry. You know, we, we attribute it to ourselves. But in a lot of Eastern cultures, their language doesn't allow them to do that. So right. they will actually say, I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling anger. Or, 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 or anger's coming through me. Yeah. So, so there's actually a difference. Whereas... We say, oh, I'm feeling angry. It's me. I'm angry. Yeah. So, no, it's not. There's conditioning that's come up. And if um, mm. and if someone's done something that's made you angry and you take it on, well, you're the one being punished, yeah. not them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're not punishing them by getting angry with it's them. It's an interesting but, one. I always say to people, uh, it's your own anger. Yeah, mm. It belongs to you. So yeah. you made me angry. No, yeah. it's your own anger. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm just doing my shit, man. If that makes you angry, that's your shit. Because... One thing that makes you really angry might make another person laugh and happy. Yeah, it's all a yeah, perception. Yeah. So you got through that that hard patch. Tell me about how you talked about connection and the universe. Right. And how that that, that that kind of goes into a bit of a uh, sort of weird sort of a place. So explain well, to me. Yeah. So one of the um, my partner Shiva, um, she's a Montessori school teacher, and one of the things that they look at. Oh, I'll come back to to your question. One of the things they look at is the story that we have, okay? Right. And in modern society, we are lacking story. We're lacking connection at a very base level. When you lived in a village, 
you sat around a um, a campfire. Yep. You you knew the people in the village. You had connection with everyone. In today's modern society, we don't have connection. connection. We, yeah. we're, we're really lacking connection. It's crazy too because yeah. we've got this thing here, the social media. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but yeah. we still don't have that. It's just flicking through. It's flicking through. Yeah. It's, it's Get just, that dopamine yeah, buzz all the time. The watch dopamine. this, watch that. But yeah. we're not really connecting like no. we are right now. No. So, yeah. so the problem is that the we don't have story. And if we look for story, then what, what I feel and what I come to understand is that one of the greatest stories is because within Buddhism, you look at the, the, the passing away. One of the Buddhist meditations is to meditate on the decaying body. Oh really? And, and what 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 is there? Because if you if I look at you now, and if yeah. you were to pass away, I can imagine your decaying body going oh. through that process. Yeah. And what is left? Mm. You know, well, nothing is left at the end. So what was actually there that was of you? And this is the 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 connection is knowing that we are we are. If I cut my thumb off and I put it there, so I'm not my thumb. If I cut my hand off, I'm not my hand. If I cut my arm off, I'm not my arm. I've heard that story you know? before. It's so a bit, where of, do you bit, get... of, bit of a head fuck, that so, one, yeah. So, so what, 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 what is our consciousness? Take the head off. That's, yeah. that's, that's peak yeah. there. Well, yeah. no, because you've got yeah. heart feeling yeah, there yeah. going on. Oh, yeah. you've, got, you've got your sexual part, you've got your grounded part, your feet, you've got your... So, so, so which part actually is yeah. us? Yeah, yeah. So what are we? And for me, coming to um, the... The story that I go back to is that we are made of star stuff. Now that's a Carl Sagan line, and but it's it, it's true. I've got a rock in my garden that I set up, and it and it's full of iron, and the iron comes out and it leaves a trail on the rock that it goes that's underneath it. Right. And when my grandchildren come around, I tell them the story that that iron and that rock came from a star, right. and the iron and that rock is the same as the iron and their blood. Right, that allows us to breathe. It transports the oxygen. Oxygen, yeah. And so, we rely on that star exploding to create that iron. Right. And so we are star stuff. Yeah. And when I speak to you deeply, yeah, you are star stuff, and you are a conduit for the universe to be aware of itself. Wow. But you've got to be aware. And this wow. is the thing, you know, bring awareness to who we are, what we are, wow. how we've come about. That's it, amazing. It's, it's a, it make me emotional. To think yeah. Because yeah. when you think about that, because it's because that's science. Yeah. It, it's 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 yeah. science. It's spirituality. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a grounding and 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 truth. Yeah. And if you come to experience it, like I can see now, you, yeah. you know, you're welled up. I am welled up. And when yeah, you yeah. feel that, when you actually feel that connection, yeah. that gives you somewhere to belong. Yeah, that, the, I Which, just had a, had a, a spiritual mm, epiphany. I'm yeah. not a spiritual man, as you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't believe in anything. But yeah. that there was like, wow, that hit me. Just as that moment to think yeah. about how we are all connected. Yeah. When, you, when you broke it down in a way I could understand. And... That's fucking heavy, bro. That's heavy shit. I mean, we did a yeah. lot. Of, we did a lot of shit now, yeah, Dave. Yeah, That's yeah, really yeah, heavy yeah, shit. Yeah, That's like yeah. the next level. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is that when you have a conversation with someone who is comes from that place, yeah. you you feel it, and it gives you connection. So what I what I would say is, you know, for for me. Moving forward in my life is that's what I sort out. I, I sort out. I sort out. And and like I said to you before. For some people, they will back off. They are not used to. They don't want to hear that. They, they don't want to hear that. They can't. They. they I can they, understand that. Um, that's hard. That's a hard yeah, one to actually yeah, yeah, process. Yeah. Oh, that, that was like um, the realization of what you were saying. I actually got that. You put it in a way like you explained to your grandchildren about the rock and the iron and the mm -hmm. blood, and I can understand all that. That that to me makes sense. Yeah. I can actually put that in some sort of. You paint it in a way I can understand because I don't understand spiritual stuff. I don't. Yeah. I have a lot of spiritual, so-called spiritual stuff that have yeah. the weird shit. I, I sound like, but I don't understand it yeah. because I just don't. Yeah. Uh, I grew up with Christianity. I grew up with going to church, going to Sunday school, and Jesus is the way. But then uh, this invisible man in the sky after a while just didn't seem to really make sense to me after a while. There seemed to be an, an illogical pattern, and, and now we're getting into beliefs and. Mm. And then and yours is just another belief. And, and then you get this, this, this polarization. I'm right, you're wrong. But the way you painted to me there goes into a science that 
my 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 man brain, mm. this woman think differently, uh, can put that in a rightful place, and it does make sense. I have actually read Stephen Hawkins' book, which um, I, I struggled with because I'm not very clever. I, I read it and I struggled with with um, going to fourth dimension, uh, travel time, and the quantum physics. But I did get through it, and I did go to the library to get a lot of references to understand what I was reading. And there was a lot of stuff in that there that talks about how everything evolved in the beginning. And you could talk about the God gene, like you could talk about God creating that all too, if that makes you feel better about there being a God. Mm. But just what you said about, so so when we connect up, like you and I connecting up right now, mm. we really are deeply connecting. Mm. It's about really connecting up with the universe. Yeah. 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 That, and that, that's it. So so for me, it was seeking out, and I, you know, and, and I had to look for people that I could get that connection with yeah. because not everyone is of the same tribe. Yeah. You know, and it's and it's finding people. But in the first instance, what I found was nature. I went out in the bush. You did, eh? And I went out in the bush and I went in the forest. And when I was in the forest, I didn't know where the forest began. And, you know, after a couple of days, where does the forest begin? Where does it end? And where do I yeah. fit into it? And you lose yourself in, in those spaces because there's no... There's no distractions, there's no phones, there's no people, there's yeah. just you and this living organism. It's like being in a lung. You know, mm. they talk about Christ being the lung, lung of, of, of the, the earth. Well, it is. Got... Yeah, and when you're in there, I can imagine Tell like you're in, you're in amongst the, you know, these um, little parts of, of yep. the, the lung that are exchanging the air, and it's, yeah, it's a very. Um, it's my church grounding. It's so, my... so that's where I grounded myself first. I went out. I found, I found solitude, and you know, away from the buzz and the din. Mm. Found that solitude to center myself, and then I took that and I looked for those who would listen. And a lot, you know, a lot don't listen, or a lot will listen but not get it. But that's okay, you know, because it is a personal journey. What? Time and how long would you spend in the forest and how did you sleep? I'm just these, mm. these, as a hunter. Like, yeah. did you did you use a hammock? Did you use a tent? Did you? What was your setup? Because to go in there, you've yeah. got to stay more than one a day yeah, to really get yeah, that. Eh? Yeah. So what was what yeah. would you do? So I, I, I use the Hennessy hammock. Hennessy so hammock. Hennessy yeah. hammock, and um, I would go in and I would do three or four days. So I'd have you know, right. two or three nights in there, mm. and I would just find my thing was going up streams, so I'd find a nice stream, yep. go into National Park, go off the track, look on a map, go, yep. go, I can see it. You know, there's a stream or a ravine mm. or yeah, an interesting yeah. water system in here. Yeah, yeah. Find it, go up it, get my boots by wet. By yourself? Yeah, by myself, mm. get my boots wet. Um, mm. And that sense of isolation and that sense of achievement too, you know, like you're actually mm. doing something. I've seen um, some of your videos. Yeah, eh? and I mean, yeah. getting out there and finding these beautiful places. I used to, photo, you know, so I was photographing them as, as well at the same time. So going out there, photographing them, and just coming back um, refreshed, recharged. I mean, this is it. You know, like any time out there, even if you, you know, you go out here and spend, you know, five minutes sitting here quiet, you know, a bit of meditation, recharge. Um, going out for you know one two three four days, it's mm. just really you just. Come I get back that, and it's and, I, it's and it stays with you. I mean, this is it the, does does stay with you. Yeah, you know, when you really get that grounding, it's lasting. It's yeah. like charging a battery. If you put it on for a short time, yeah, yeah it'll last for a sh short. time. I don't want to come home when I do mm. my hunting trips. Yeah. If I'm away for four or five days, last year I did a few. Um, one was with the young guy Jody. We were away five days in the tops and. I don't really want to come back yeah. to civilization. Yeah. You start to get into a, into a vibe out there, and, and uh, you guys that hunt all know what I'm talking about. You get into the space where you just it's it's, it's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. And so so that was yeah. part of your your healing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I got to a point where I thought, oh, if I found a cave, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <If I, laughs> and, and I didn't think, oh, if I won a million dollars. One lotto, maybe I just get a helicopter, fly me in supplies every two or three months, and just do a little parcel drop, and I just stay there. <laughs> you could do, yeah. In fact, you'd probably do a lot of fasting too, because if unless you're actually heavily hunting and doing it, you a lot of expenditure. You probably actually do quite a lot of fasting, which also can be very, very cleansing too, and very good for the mind. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the the, the thing is that um, you know this is you know probably um, won't appeal to everybody this idea of you know going out but uh, into the bush, but you can do it at home, and it's just a matter of 
shutting out the dim, mm. turning off those things. I mean, my TV has a cover over it. Right. So it's covered all the time. So if I want to watch that TV, I've got to pull that cover off, and that's mm. a reminder to me, do I really want to do this? Mm. Is it going to be that's a value? Cool. That's cool. It's because it is, rather than just having the remote, I, I hate going into people's places oh, yeah. and the TV's on. My dad has a full It's time. just yeah, yeah. mindless. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like... I don't you know, have a TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. No yeah, TV at yeah, all, yeah. yeah. Particularly yeah. these days, because a lot of media is actually controlled, where yeah. we're getting fed stuff mm. all the time. Yeah. It's like, it's not good. So... In your evolution of becoming who, I mean, I've known you since a kid at school, and we've been friends for a long time, um, and in the last two years since I, I got you onto the keto diet, mm. has that changed, has the keto diet changed your life in any way, like, if, oh, yeah, like yeah, as yeah, far as yeah. quality, has it added? Has it added oh, added? shit, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, as you know, like, with um, my uh, ankylosing spondylitis, which I, you know, had for well, if you go from this Say that again, what is it? Ankylosing spondylitis. So ankylosing spondylitis is... So it's, it's, it's a... Ankylosing is the... Um, is the... I think describes the function of, of the joints being becoming um, calcified. Oh, right. And yep. spondylitis, I think, is to do with the spine. But ankylosing spondylitis is a arthritic condition. Right. And for... I mean, if I haven't... Since being on keto, I haven't been on any any pain medication or drugs. So for sixteen and a half really sixteen and a half years, I was taking uh, naproxen, a thousand milligrams a day, which is a yep. high potency yep, anti-inflammatory. Sure yep, 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 taken that um, because I tried all sorts of things. Um, and sure. when I was taking, I was taking three um, diclofenac um, at a time, ninety milligrams, and they said, "No, you can't do that. That's you know, you're only supposed to be taking one a one a day." So the, it was. I had to take that much to get any effect. So 1,000 milligrams and that percent every day. Um, I was taking between 4 to 10 codalgin every day, which is 9 milligrams of codeine and 500 milligrams of paracetamol Shit. per tablet. Mm. Plus I would take... Every day? Every day. Plus I would take codeine at night to be able to sleep. Now... You take what night? Codeine. 30 milligrams yep. codeine. And I might take one. So you said it wreck your gut, wasn't it? Uh, was it? Patient? Yeah, the, the, the kind of like the... Um, the naproxen and the coding counteract with each other because mm. the, uh, w- w- one binds you, one makes you um, loose. So um, it mm. seemed to work out all right. But that level, you know, I would go to the doctor every six weeks and get another prescription. And, 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 that, and that was that. And, and I still wasn't pain free. I mean, the thing was, I was, I was doing all that, but I was living with pain. And I did yoga, you know, um, yeah, a you lot did, of yeah. yoga. I but, did yoga with you. Yeah. But I did yoga in pain. And I would take coding before I would go and do my yoga because it was better to be working and moving in pain. Is that why you did hot yoga, is it? Yeah, than not moving. But the keto diet, since going on the keto diet, I now take no medication at all and I am 95% pain-free. Far out. You know, I I went for a... uh, Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I sat with a surgeon about probably five, six, seven years ago looking at a hip replacement, yep. my doctor asked to use my x-rays for my hips to show medical students because he said it's the best example I've got of a bad example. Wow. So, so, But my hips, yeah, they bite every now and then, but I don't have aching pain in them. I mean, I used to drive along in the car with all that pain medication and still be driving along and the, and, and the undulations of the road are making my hips hurt because, Jeez. you know, now I don't have that. And... It's, that's so, I mean, liberating. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I haven't pushed myself back out to do any missions in the bush with that because I um, I do have some lower back pain Yeah. that with a pack would probably be exacerbated. But this year, 2022, I'm throwing supermans into my daily routine okay. to strengthen my back. And so... Um, so what, what does that involve? Superman's just like basically um, lying on the floor and arching the back and... Yeah. You, oh, you yeah. go, you, you arms out, arms back, whilst keeping mm. your palms off the floor. And what it does is it strengthens, strengthens yeah. the back and counteracts yeah. um, what I'm doing with the press ups. So, so you're also a black belt in Satan? Was, yeah. What? I mean, you, was. You, you become a black belt at a point in time. I'm not a black belt anymore. Yeah, yeah, but you're certainly, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and over yeah. the years, you've used it to either help people or, or you know, use it in a positive way. Um, is there any. Any times that you would do a carter again, if Sato, like you go uh, to a carter? Yeah, I, I mean, I've I've um, I've looked at um, 
learning my relearning my favourite carters. You were um, good at it, man. I remember in the dojo watching you. Shit, you were a machine. Yeah, I mean, my 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 Zinka Tadashi, my carters were very low, and I pushed that. I'm a Virgo, so it would go. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be, and that's mm-hmm. the way it's supposed. To be. I guess you could say it's supposed to be from a purely aesthetic point of view, not from a fighting point of view. Um, yeah. But then it was that, yeah, I loved Carter. But then, you know, it probably didn't do my hips any good either. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I know a lot of um, karate and martial artists that have got buggered hips yeah. because, you know... We, it was hard on our hips. Yeah, yeah. You're the one that got me first into mm-hmm. Anna. I've got to get into, into, into mm-hmm. that um, Seder when it started. And I'm, yeah. I chose after a short time, now I'm going to do music because it took so much time. But mm-hmm. one thing it taught me was how to block, and it actually mm. saved my life in one situation yeah. where a guy was trying to stab me, yeah. and every time he did, it was yeah. that, and yeah. it came so natural, yeah. all of yeah. that, and yeah. all I ended up was with bruises where the, the knife handle had got me, and yeah. I got the blade away. He was trying to kill me. He wasn't yeah. actually... So, no. that, so it saved yeah. my life, yeah. 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 We have a, a yeah. lot of, a lot of, yeah, lot of history, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, we do. It's, yeah, all yeah, the surfing and all the, the life surfing, we had. Yeah. Picking up the guitar together for the first yeah, time, yeah. and that's it. Like you, you kept on with the guitar, and I was like, "Oh, fuck!" And you were good. Yeah. And I remember, I remember you at the Stevie Ray Vaughan concert. You got his pick, picture from Stevie mm-hmm. Ray Vaughan. Remember yeah, that? Yeah. No, well, that, I, I would love to have his picked up. That wasn't from Stevie Ray Vaughan. I tried to get. Oh, it from Steve wasn't. Ray oh, in my yeah. head, I've changed yeah, history. Yeah, so what happened yeah. there, bro? Yeah. So because I, I've been to, um, and I think the guy's name. He was a really good blues guitarist. Um, you know, not an, an like he was. An wasn't Steve Rayborn's brother? No, 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 it wasn't. Jim. He supported them. No, no. So, um, and it wasn't at the concert, but it was at a previous concert that right. I'd been to, and I'd got the pack. And oh. so I was like, I had this idea that I was going to, and that's probably what I've related to. Oh, I've changed history, man. Because Mike, Mike and I set out um, after the concert, mm. and we're the only two there. The limo was there. This was Town Hall, Christchurch. Yeah, yeah, yeah Christchurch yeah, yeah. Town Hall. Yeah. And the limo's there, and uh, Mike McDonald and myself, and Stevie ca- came out by himself with his oh, fucking hat on, man. and he's got a scarf, wow, and it's like, wow. and we're just like, oh man, you know, fucking awesome concert, man. And it's like, you know, he was like, I, I remember you telling me when you shook his hand, it yeah. was soft. It was soft, man. It yeah. was just kind of like, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't. Wasn't it, a hand man. It was. It wasn't yeah. a you know, yeah. man shake. It was just soft, but it was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That was, yeah. Yeah, that was, really that was amazing. I saw him yeah. too. I saw him live, and uh, we're so glad. What a loss he oh, was, eh? Yeah, Stevie Ray yeah. Vaughan. No, wow. I, st- I still listen to Lenny, oh, you yeah. know, and yeah, it's yeah. just like amazing. It's, it's peaceful. Tim Pan and, Alley, yeah. all that music. Yeah. So I can hear, yeah. I can feel it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We grew up some cool yeah. music, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have some cool life. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's really, it's really cool to 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 connect up with you again. And I, I love every time I connect, but connect up with you because we really do connect you and I, mm. and. We talk about everything and anything without fear. Yeah. There's no yeah. fear, at, even though we, we probably, I don't think we actually clash. There's things that we teach each other, but because we're both so open, yeah. talking about like the vaccine yeah. is a good one, yeah. or talking yeah. about uh, how it's so polarizing with yeah. our families and, and, and society and the way the world's going, but we never seem to actually clash because it's almost like we're opening up more and more and expanding when we yeah. talk. Yeah. We don't have this thing where, well, actually, this is how it goes, and you'll fucking listen to me. We don't have that. No. Well, all we have is this transparency, and it's really cool, man. I, I, I love it. And, I mean, we, we may be guilty of, of, you know, confirmation bias, too, because we, yeah. we're our confirmation bias. But a confirm, but confirmation bias of openness yeah. has got to be a lot better than a confirmation bias of Polarization I disagree. On money I, I disagree. I disagree okay. because I think you and I are both always prepared to be wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so there you don't That's have confirmation bias. Yeah. We're always prepared to yeah. get be wrong. Okay. Like if you if you're going to prove me and you can give me stuff that I can see yeah. makes sense, I'm not going to go. That doesn't work in my picture of what is. I'll actually change. Yeah. And I'm always prepared to be wrong. Yeah. And I think. If you can remove your ego, because that's all the thing is, it's making you hold close to your beliefs. It's ego. It's like, oh, this is me and this is who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm always prepared to be wrong. Yeah. Like, I've been following a vegan recently. I mean, can you imagine me following yeah. a vegan? Yeah. He's a guy that, he's a doctor, and yeah. I've been listening to him, and it's so far outside of my belief system, but I'm listening to what he's got. And whilst it still isn't me, I'm actually listening to him and going, that stuff he's got there is actually really good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, all the doctors... Everything I listen to everybody all the time, and being prepared to be wrong is a really cool thing because you actually grow. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. absolutely, and it, and it's funny because I mean it's one of the gifts that life can bring you is that understanding that being wrong 
is a step forward. It's not a step backwards. Right. Most people think that being wrong puts them a step back. Yeah. Because they have that, that idea that if my ego has been a, attacked because I've been proven wrong, then I need to battle up yeah. and stand that ground and yeah. not lose it because I'm going to go backwards. But actually, if you give in to it and go, oh, actually, I've just learned something, you've stepped forward. Yeah, yeah. You've moved forward. I get it all the going, time because yeah. because I, I, I do a video just about mm. every day somewhere yeah. and, I, and I'm just speaking like we are right now yeah. most of the time. I get proven wrong all the time yeah. and I'm doing it on a, on a platform with thousands of people yeah. watching and I won't argue the point and I'll go, either I'll go, that's very interesting or shit, man, you're right. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for enlightening me. Yeah. Thank you for making me better. And the thing is, I am wrong. I'm yeah. wrong a lot of the time. Yeah. A yeah. lot of stuff, and I'm always prepared to be wrong because otherwise, how can I go forward? There's an interesting thing in schools. You've often got this thing, and I teach a lot of young guys that don't have dad stuff. And some of them, I'll say to them, right? Do you know? Have you ever shot a rat before? And I have one kid. He constantly lies. Name is Sea Dog. Yeah. Okay. I said, okay. Well, he's got two boys. You've already shot a rat, but you never have. And the other goes, no, I haven't. He's trying to tell me he's done it just to try to impress me. So he actually misses out on learning how to shoot a rabbit because I want to teach the kid that hasn't. As it turns out, he's never done it. And you have these kids in school that's, and the teacher says, you know what, blah, 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 as they go, yep, just just to not lose face. Yeah. But the, it's the kid that's quiet that goes, I don't know, and diligently listens. He's the one that actually grows and grows yeah. and grows and gets yeah. better and better yeah. and better. Exactly. And at school, I was guilty of pretending I knew when I didn't right. because I was actually dyslexic and I was covering up my inadequacy. Yep. And that was a survival thing, but it served me no good. Yeah. And consequently, I got left behind, dumbed down, yeah. and left school without any education. Yeah. A dumb yeah. fucker. So, so that there has been a lesson of me to yeah. learn to, to actually, it's okay to be completely wrong. Yep. And the other thing interesting is we worry about people judging us, but what I have learned is... By being honest about my inadequacies and how much I don't know, I've never lost friends over it. No. Like, like, no. do you dislike me any less when I tell no. you I don't know? I don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't. No. Do you? you don't. No. You don't dislike me. No. You just go, okay, yeah. he's he's a little bit ignorant of that. Let me, let me help him. And then when you help me and you see me learn it, then you even like me more because you've actually connected up with me and given me something from yourself. And I'm spreading it to my kids, and you go away feeling like you've actually achieved something. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a cool feeling. And, and honesty is really all we want. Yeah. You know, and honesty can be confronting. It's hard, bro. You know, but if if I see honesty in you, yeah. then that can, it's a reflection to me too. It's a, you know, hey, I, am I being honest with myself? You yeah. know, here's yeah. someone who's prepared to fucking step into that space and be honest, go, yeah, actually, I don't know that shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And which is, it's vulnerability. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you have to, um, you know, it's not being soft or it's not being, you know, um, admitting defeat. It's actually stepping up to the plate when yeah. you say, hey, don't know that. Yeah. You know? yeah. We really could talk about that for hours. But also, I think that when you have a certain confidence in yourself, because I get a lot of uh, negative stuff, you know, yeah. kill yourself, yeah. hope you get cancer. That was a good one. I wrote back to her, I wrote back to her and said, actually, I did. <laughs> and, and, and a woman in, in, in yeah. the UK oh, on, my, on my hunting channel, yeah. you yeah. deserve to die. I hope you get cancer. And I wrote back, well, your dream came came true, I did get cancer, yeah, <laughs> and that's yeah, that an interesting yeah. dialogue. The thing is, I get so much stuff, eventually I come to realise that actually it's how I really honestly feel about me, and I know all my shit stuff, Yeah, I know yeah, my shortcomings, yeah, and yeah. I know my good stuff. Yeah. I'm really in touch with that, so when people give me a lot of praise, it doesn't really lift me up. Mm. I get a lot of praise, that, oh man, you're a legend, but I go, well actually, no, I'm, I'm actually not, I'm, I'm, this is what I am, and also when I get a lot of shit, I don't take that on either because I go, well, actually, no, you're not right there. I'm not that sort of an arsehole of a person because I'm actually this sort of an arsehole person, yeah. but you can't see that. Yeah. So I yeah. know what I am. So when I say I don't know Peter, and if you were to judge me, uh, oh, that would be your stuff, not my stuff. It would yeah. be a reflection of what you're feeling. Yeah. And most of the hate that, well, in fact, I would say it's about all the hate we get, whether it's online or in our lives, is people venting their self-hate, what's going on within themselves, to reflect what they're feeling. Absolutely, yeah. comments, I mean, it's interesting, um, as a photographer, you know, like, um, you know, I've, I've come to realise that there's very little value in the social space of what people think of work, you know. Right, yeah. right, that's interesting. And, 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 and those people that will put on comments like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, and, and if you do go and look at their work, you go, well, 
if, if it was someone who was like really achieving and you know was producing published material and you know you go oh okay there's something here I, mm. I should listen to this mm. but if you know you go well actually it's just someone else feeling vulnerable in this space yeah, yeah, they're yeah, probably yeah. looking at what you're doing and going well yeah that's good but I don't like it and it's interesting because what I've done is is just I've I met a guy um, and we exchange their Instagrams and I've been watching what he does and what he's doing I believe is a bastardization of photography right but I've, I'm committed to looking at his, his feed all the time right because that's an opinion that I have and what he's doing is he actually if it makes him happy and he's feels value in that, that's all that matters. All that matters, yeah. And so when I look at it, I go, oh, well, that's not what I would do. Mm. But that doesn't matter. It actually, and it makes me realise that if you get negative feedback, those those comments that we can put some value on, yes. they have no value because we're all different. Mm. We all value different things. And if by putting stuff out, and whether it's an opinion, your art, you know, anything out in that social space and want to get validation from likes or comments, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, building you up, then you're in for a rough ride. In for a rough ride, man. Because yeah. the only, you know, if you have something that you want to share, share it and people, will t you know, if you see value in it, people will take value from it mm -hmm. and there will always be the haters. Yeah. And you just cannot give them any of your energy because once you get into that loop, Trying to and then you go, oh, I'll try to please these people mm, mm. because I don't like that negative comment. Mm. And then what are you doing? Someone flicking through, giving you two seconds, and going, oh, I'll put a heart on that, flick through. Yeah. And if in the two minutes' time you'd say, well, what were the, the images you put a heart on? They wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. It means nothing to them. If yeah. someone engages with your yeah. art, your photography, yeah. your videos, yeah. then they will take the time to write something yeah. or to connect or, you know, and, and it might just be a, a like, but it's not a, a you know comment that's, that's going the other way. And so the, yeah, with the, the whole ego, we have to be, you know, we have to be looking at what we take on board and that's the the social space is something that i think we've got to be very careful absolutely yeah. but for you as a photographer i guarantee and correct me if i'm wrong but i guarantee when you create a photo when you take a photo and when you've you've done what you're doing you've edited it and you sit back and you know that that is good for what you perceive good to be mm. i guarantee that you put that out there Still feeling good regardless now. Yeah, You're at that yeah, place because because yeah. I have videos that I just I just love mm. and I go wow this is this is something I've worked on and they they they, they crash they yeah. don't, they, they, they rank like the worst mm. and I don't worry about it. No, I don't worry about it because I know for me that was a work that I'm yeah, proud of. The yeah. same with music, the same with art. You have to first and foremost for it to be sustainable. You've got to really love what you do. Mm -hmm. You've got to really enjoy. I, I love my work. I love making video. I love making music. I love like I always have done. Yeah. Even before there was an internet, I just love doing. I love mm -hmm. creating stuff, and I love sharing, and I love making people. Um, I like the connection. It's a yeah. form of connection again, and we're coming back to the same the yeah, same thing: yeah, connecting yeah. up people. And the easiest, best way that I find to connect with people is is to be honest. And and show them all your little idiosyncrasies, yep. your nuances, your 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 fuck ups, your your imperfections, your strong points, your empathy, your your absolute self. And it's bloody dangerous doing that because when you do that, man, you can get yourself you can get fucked up by people. The, the, the analogy I like <laughs> is, is two neighbours either side of a fence. There's a fence in between each other, and they talk to each other about what their lives are like, you right. know, and then. All of a sudden, there's a strong wind comes along one day, blows the fence down, and then they are both naked. And they've, you know, one one guy's old and bald, and yeah. maybe he's a wee bit overweight, and he's been telling the other guy that he's, you know, some tanned surf. <laughs> you know. and, 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 and that's, you know, it's like we've got to be real. When when people are, the fence does come down, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, the fence does come down. Sooner or later, the fence comes down. Yeah. And, and taking that fence down means being vulnerable, and and vulnerability is what we, you know, is. 
very valuable when we see it in other people. Yeah. You know, we're scared to show it ourselves. But well, we, we are because it. because we all have things wrong with us. We all tell lies to some yep. degree. We yep. all tell lies. Some people are sadistic. Some people have uh, things they're ashamed of. They've, we all have some form of fear. Mm. One of my fears is rats. And you joke right. about it. I live yeah. in the house of rats running across the bed at night. And I had yeah. to uh, overcome that fear. Yeah. Uh, another one of my fears has always been public humiliation, which mm. I've managed. And now I'm in the public domain. Yeah. Yeah. And I've actually faced all those fears. One of the ways I faced public humiliation was by creating a YouTube channel 10 years ago. Yeah. And putting myself out there and realizing this isn't so bad. Yeah. It's yeah. not so bad when I... So, so all of yeah. these things that we actually go into and... As I think it's a Buddhist saying, eventually, just like the sun comes up every day, the truth comes out every day. I'm mm -hmm. not sure that's a Buddhist thing or not, but it sounds like a Buddhist yeah, thing to me. Yeah, so, so, so we have things that are going to reveal us, and we most of us carry things that we don't want to be revealed somewhere down inside our psyche. And when you get to a place where you're comfortable with that being revealed as well, then you're probably there. And you might go, oh, I can never know people know that about me. But we really... We really have to then be okay with ourselves, and, and it doesn't matter what people think. We have to be okay with that particular yeah. thing. So that weakest link, I remember when you were going through a bad patch and you said, bro, we've all got our mountain to climb. And I'm still climbing my mountain, yeah. man. I'm not there yet. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not there. Yeah, I'm, I'm still, either, man. I'm still yeah. getting there. Yeah. 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 I don't get people say these New Year's resolutions. It's 2022. I don't need to have... A New Year's Eve to make resolutions. I make resolutions quite regularly. Mm. I made a resolution three years ago, I'm going to go on a keto diet. I made a resolution two years ago, I'm going to eat one meal a day. I resolve these things as I go along when the time comes right. I don't need a date to do it. I don't think anybody no, else should. No. To make a change, yeah. you should you should make a change either before crisis comes or crisis will come along and force you to make it. You don't wake up one morning and go, Peter wakes up and goes, oh, this morning I'm going to evolve and find something more about myself. What happens is you wake up and go, fuck, oh no, shit, this is this is something about me I didn't want to have to look at. Then you've got to fucking look at it. Yeah. And then yeah. you have to evolve. Yeah. That's yeah. what happens. Yeah. Some people some people go, oh no, and then they go, drink, or they have sex, or they have gambling, or they have smoked dope, yeah. and they don't look at it. Yeah. And they continue to keep smoking dope, or continue, and I've been there too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was in Europe, man, 3,159 shows, and I had just about a, just about a different girl every night. Mm -hmm. I was, like, using sex as a way, as a young man, yeah. to fuck my way to not looking looking at myself. And yeah. it was a cover-up. Yeah. And it wasn't until I came back to New Zealand and actually got into the bush. Yeah. Spent hours and hours, days on end with my dogs, in the hills, yeah. alone, that I had to, I was stuck with myself. Mm -hmm. I had no distraction, couldn't do rock and roll, couldn't... Couldn't take drugs, couldn't fuck groupies. I was just me. Yeah. And I went fucking crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. I went through really, really like, who am I? What am I? All these questions. And I really struggled to, and, and finally got forced into having to be responsible for how I was feeling. Mm. And then I had children. That was another responsibility. And it's been a real journey. Yeah. And I would be more happy today. I am more happy today than I ever have been in my life. Yeah. Yet I've had... The worst should happen. Yeah. And I've had so much loss, but I'm actually in a place now where I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. It took a long time to get here. Yeah. But I've got friends that, and we've lost friends. Uh, I guess uh, Mike would be one mm. who's no longer with us, who mm. he just mm. all the time smokes cigarettes, covered up all the time, and eventually life takes 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 yeah. you out of the equation. So, And you and I could have gone that way yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. We're not anything special. No, no, we're not. We're not special, not. eh? We're no, nothing we're not. special about us, and no, we no, should so never no, ever fool ourselves. We're just lucky. Mm. Yeah. We're lucky that we actually evolved enough to survive all the things we did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. It, it, it. This is it, it's evol personal evolution. Yeah. And like say, evolution, you know, you, you make that comparison. Evolution of, of a species. Some species die out. You know, some people die out because they don't evolve. Because yeah. the, the the thing is, as as we're young, and you know, I'd say this to anyone young listening to your, your channel, is that when you're young, you've got you don't know what life holds. You don't know you really you know you've got this expectation of coming out of school and getting a job, and then you're going to get a house, and you're going to meet someone, you're going to have children, and, all wow. sort of things. and you're going to meet the perfect partner. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be all yeah, good, eh? Yeah. But the thing is that how can you meet the perfect partner when the per the partner you meet when you're twenty or twenty five <coughs> or thirty, you know they're growing, they're evolving, so I mean, at a different rate. To yeah, you too. At, at a different rate. So I mean, it, it, it's really. You know, you, you've got to be aware that you, we are evolving and you've got to embrace that evolution 
yeah. and feed it. Because the more you feed it, possibly the sooner you'll make breakthroughs. Mm. If you're not feeding that evo that personal evolution and sitting back, taking drugs, drinking sex, you know, doing those things mm. that yeah. you know take you away from working on yourself, mm. then you know those things will come later in life. And when they do come, you'll go, "Fuck, I'm happy now, and I've reached this, you know, this this epiphany, yeah. you know, where I'm still evolving." Yeah. But man, I am so content. And content. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing that you do become. <clears throat> yeah. There's always work to do, but there you is. become yeah. content with, with where you are. And, and enjoy and enjoy the journey on each step of the yeah. way. Like every day. I, I wake up, the first thing I do in the morning when I wake up is when well, I have a big stretch and mm. I go, I'm fucking still here, man. Mm. I wasn't meant to be here, but I'm still here. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. That yeah. in itself is, is a gift. Yeah. So I've got life. Yeah. Because sure as hell, one morning, it ain't gonna happen, yep, brother. That's it. it ain't gonna happen. That's it. And we're yeah. old. We yeah. get close yeah. to sixty. That's <laughs> it. And, and, and you know, one of the things that you know I, I, I you know I always contemplated was okay, I'm on my deathbed. I, my, 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 you know, my, my breath's rattling. Yeah. You know, the machine's beeping slower and slower. The family's gathered around. And I want to I wanna be able to go, you know what? You know, I, I, I know myself, you know, because that's really the only thing you can do. Yeah. You know, like, the, truly the only thing you can take out of this life is to go out knowing, actually, I got it figured I got myself figured out. Don't worry about anybody else. Yeah, yeah. You know? I got myself figured got, out. If you yeah. get yourself figured out, yeah. you can you can check out knowing that, yeah. then you're done bloody well because a lot of people will check out and without really ever delving into so who, they, who are. they truly yeah. are. They're a reflex action of their environment, their culture, their yeah. upbringing, their... Their injustices, perceived injustices, yep. real injustices. Oh, I'm losing a guy right now. Yeah. If, you, if you're watching this, uh, Goober, Goober said to me he had a lot of anger in his life, yeah. a lot of anger. Yeah. And he's, but he's going to the grave now. He's last stage of right. his life, going to the yeah. grave with with peace in his heart. Fantastic. Which is which is fantastic. Yeah, awesome, so, man. yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, I will go to the grave. Well, mm. myself, because I already faced my own um, death two and a half years ago. I didn't think I was going to yeah. make it. So, yeah. so yeah, had a, was... having an advanced cancer that spread. I saw the fear in you, man. You know. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, I was horrible. really, really on my way. Mm. But I, but and I did have fear. But I also came to a point eventually of acceptance, and yeah. that was a journey in yes. itself. Yeah. You saw me just when I'd been told I had it, so I had having to process that, and I was loving life, and I didn't want to lose lose life, no. and yeah, I was like. Sorry, but yeah, what I saw, and I'll, I'll quantify that, is the fear, but you you were prepared to fight. You were, you yeah. were like, well, what can I do? Yeah. You know, so you were stepping forward instead of, you know, standing still or stepping back. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd done a huge yeah. amount of research oh, yeah. on, on, on what... And thank God you did, because, I mean, that's why I went on the keto yeah. diet. That's why I don't take pain medication, because you had yeah. that, yeah. and that, your cancer was a gift to me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's spread out. It's the doors that life opens for you, isn't it? It does, and a lot of other men. I've got there's yeah. over 113 men now yeah. that yeah. that I know that's still on that diet right. yeah. uh, that I've kept record of, yeah. and and some really good mates, yeah. and and it's really good to see them all like you being pain free yeah. and and on. But I've also got more than one friend who is either diabetic type two. Who's having really struggling? Who has tried to but fallen off it, and they're now physically suffering, and they yeah. just will not listen. They're having cornflakes for breakfast and yeah. wheat bix, and then for lunch they're having bread, and they and, and, and they're just sick, they're, and they're dying, and they just cannot make that transition. Yeah, it's so hard, and I also understand that. Yeah, because for a lot of years, yeah. I was yeah, smoking yeah. cigarettes, drinking that's, whiskey. That's it. So we've been in that position. We've been so in you, can't, you can't throw stones. I'm not, man. It's, I'm, it's, I'm not. I've been there. I know what yeah, it's like. Yeah, it's I'll, frustrating when you can see someone, you know, a brother that you, you, you care you, you, for. You care for. You want to. And you know what's going to yeah, fix it. Yeah. And, and every time I see an obese person, I judge, man. <laughs> and I shouldn't. I judge. I go, that person, if they were on, only on keto, I know yeah. their life would be better. I wish they had the discipline, yeah. but that's their journey, and it's also part of their road, mm -hmm. and it may be that they have to go through that, that terrible death experience. Yeah. I've, I've got uh, one bloke that lost, I said to him in three or four years, bro, if you keep going like you're going to be full-blown diabetes, you know, you'd know, be type two. Yeah, yeah, he drank a flat flag and a beer every day, and, mm -hmm. and he was already starting to show, he was peeing a lot and showing the signs, and I said, you're becoming insulin resistant. Three years down the track, he got diagnosed as diabetes type two. I said, "Bro, you've got to change your diet now." Um, this was this was three years ago that I said that there, and 
This before I knew, didn't know a lot about it. Yeah. A year later, he had his first leg amputated. Yeah. Kept on drinking. Yeah. Last year, he had his second leg amputated, yeah. and it's yeah. going to be his hands next. Peripheral yeah. vascular disease is the biggest cause of yeah. amputees, and yeah. it's mostly to diabetes type yeah. two. Yeah. Still, still drinking. Yeah. And, 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 and he ended up with one arm, and he's got the other one to hold the flag, and he'll still drink yeah. it because that there is his lesson. That's his. That's his. That's his life. Yeah. That's yeah. the path he's chosen, and we aren't to judge. No. No. No, but it's just... We yeah. just see it and want to help yeah. through yeah. compassion and empathy, yeah. but we, we aren't to judge because no. we have also done stupid-ass stuff. Mm. We're no different. We are yeah. no different. No. And I hate telling people what I think would be good for them yeah. because straight away I'm feeling like I'm preaching, and I don't want to preach. Mm. All I want them to be is be well, but I notice whenever I put a video up on a keto diet, I get a lot of dislikes, right. and, I get, and it's people not wanting to give up stuff. I don't, yeah. oh, I'm not, I'm not going to give up my potatoes or I'm not going to give up my whiskey. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, get that. shit, yeah. 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 I, I mean, that. I, I, I'm off keto at the moment. For, good. I've been off two weeks, two and a half weeks. How are you finding it? Uh, yeah, good, because what I do do and what I have found is that, you know, um, I am, you know, I don't have sugar still. Yeah. You know, I am, you know, anything that with carbs because I've been doing, you know, keto now two and a half, three years. Um, so I everything's low carb anyway. So yeah. I'm keeping. You're probably in out. ketosis to some degree. Uh, are you doing? Are you doing possibly. any form of fasting? But I mean, I, I, I don't normally drink beer, and of course that's one of the things that you yeah. know people go, oh, you know, I had a a, a girl who you know um, would have really you know benefited from being on keto, but you know I have one every night. I'm not going to get that up. Like, well, she could have had a, a, a non carb beer. Those blo those blonde beers are non carb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. she, hers was wine, so it was. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you, you do have to, you do have to make some sacrifice in anything yeah. in life. You want yeah, to and, that, and that's it. You've got to be willing to make the sacrifice. But making the sac the sacrifice that I have, and people go, oh yeah, I tried it, didn't stay yeah. on it, and I go, well, you know, the thing is, for me, the benefit that ways of that of being, you know, pain free. I mean, yeah. I, people don't, you know, like like you said, I was a black belt in cray. When I got ankylosing spondylitis. I was a black belt, I was training, I was coming up to my knee down, I was instructing, and then all of a sudden I got ankylosing spondylitis. So did you not go over your knee down? No. Okay. No. So yeah. I got ankylosing spondylitis, yeah. and I couldn't instruct anymore, and so, you know, that really impacted me. Yeah. And that was because, you know, having all that pain, and now being pain-free, it's just, yeah. you know, there's the, the benefit. So, yeah. you know, the going from having um that level of pain to not having it, it's a no-brainer for me yeah, you know yeah. it's, it's just like Logic. why would i not do this yeah, yeah yes you know and when once you know once you're into that groove mm. it's great i only cook, have to cook one meal a day and when i do cook i cook enough for two nights so i cook one oh so you're only doing one meal a day as well yeah oh yeah, so when I'm on oh, cool. keto, I'll, I'll have a coffee in the morning with cream yeah i'll have a coffee at lunchtime with with cream. How much cream so are you putting in? I'm putting in about sixty mils of cream, so you could say that's knocking me out of. You, you um, probably fasting. want to go to a tablespoon. Yeah, to be in yeah. a fasted state yeah. because it's. But it works for me. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's right, kind yeah. of like, it satiates me. Yep. Uh, and I can go through mm. until um, that evening meal. Your blood sugar so, will be good, bro. So my yeah, I mean my my bloods are fantastic. Um, I had the. Um, the test where they do the elasticity of the arteries. I had oh, it yeah. done about three years ago before I was mm -hmm. on keto with a guy that was looking at people that were doing um, yoga. Yeah. And I had the the elasticity of a 32, 35-year-old. Wow. He, was, he, he had done 430-odd. He said, you're in the top 1%. Wow. Um, I had that done just recently. You can pay to get it done now. And again, she said, like, you're, you're just up the top there. She said, your, your heart health's Heart. Now, Dad had a heart attack, fifty nine. Yeah. So for me, that's that's good news. But yes. yeah. you know, the keto diet has not done any harm to that. It's you know, yeah. it, it was it was the same before I went on keto. It's still the same now. So you know, some people go, oh, well, you're eating all these fats, and you know, they don't understand the way it works. So, but the, I mean, the way that it does work is actually saturated fat is created by sugar and carbohydrate. You put you. When you eat saturated fat, that's not going to cause you any harm. You mm. need to have saturated fat. This is the thing why we've been fed. Your body actually, when you have sugar and refined carbohydrate, saturated fat is a problem in your arteries, and that yes, and that's we don't want that. But it's it's the sugars and the carbohydrates that create it in your body. Yeah. So that's yeah. the thing. If you eat a fat 
steak, and you eat that there. Oh, I you, love my yes, I do. Right. Yeah. I love that steak yeah. too. Um, when you eat one meal a day, it's a celebration. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I eat every twenty three hours, and I'm, I make a process of it. Like I've got the fish I caught, I've got the deer I caught, or the pig I caught, and there's. And I have a little bit of everything, a little bit of because you want a lot of nutrition. Yeah. So I've got my probiotics, my sauerkraut, I've got my kefir, I've got my prebiotics, my pecan nuts, my garlic, my onion. And you actually taught me about onion because I used to eat too much, mm. so keep that down. It's quite a lot of carbohydrate. And then I've got all my leafy greens. I don't actually do a lot of vegetables like I used to. I've actually mm. realised that because I want to get an impact of a lot of nutrition. You having to bulk up on a lot of leafy greens to get the the amount required to get yeah. the potassium and that. There's other things I like to get it out of, like a little bit of liver. is You can get a lot from what you get out of vegetables, a little bit of liver. So I, I tend to, eggs is probably the best amino acid you can put in your mm. body. So the best thing to break your fast with is a good amino acid, mm. to break your fast. So the first thing that you put into yourself wants to be something like an egg. Right. Uh, you and I, we could probably go well on three or four eggs a day. I find it's quite hard to eat that much, mm. so I'll just have a couple. But that's a really good amino acid to, to fuel yourself. And the cool thing about... Fasting is, of course, you're in a state of autoautophagy and you're creating growth hormone. Mm. You're actually increasing it by 2,000%. percent nothing it's, else. It's done wonders for my hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bro, that's yeah. testosterone. There's yeah. too much yeah. male. Yeah, too much. Mm. Yeah. Pedro's been a friend of mine forever. I love what Clay's doing with the Bro Check Club here because the, the thing is you need a bro. You need a bro in your life. You need someone that you can bounce ideas off. Um, and it may not be a bro, it may, may, may be a gal, but mm. you know, if you if you seek out somebody that you can talk to, um, really talk, yeah, like yeah really talk get down to, to the guts know. of what's going yeah, on, yeah. yeah, and um, you know, those the, just, yeah, yeah, and sometimes that you get to that by asking those deep and meaningful questions because that's the sort of conversation you want to have. So, you've got to get comfortable with saying things that perhaps you're not comfortable with with at the moment asking deep meaningful questions to get go find someone who's going to actually be truthful and answer those back mm. and then you can go well reach out and go hey yeah. you know we should catch up more we do it all the time we actually make a point of catching up pete's staying with ab right now a, a good friend of ours and he's staying with him he's made and he's made time in his day pete and i are both really really busy mm. pete's a professional and he's an artist he's a photographer and similar to, to me and a lot our fields cross over and we both put a lot of time into our work because we're passionate about our work. We love our work, but we also make sure we make time for each other. And when we do, we always come away feeling, I always come away feeling good. I can't yeah, speak for yeah, you, but I, always, yeah. I feel like I've connected with a brother. And I also come away with something new every time I'm with you, bro. I always yeah. come away with something, oh, okay, I need to look at that part of myself and explore that more. And it's neat. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It re just reinforces um, the value of life because, I mean, this is what, you know, mm. what we want. It is. Check on a brother and uh, <laughs> go steady. We'll see you in the next one.